I'm gonna tell you what YouTube analytics to focus on if you're wanting to grow your YouTube channel. And we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So I get this question all the time. Nick, I wanna grow my YouTube channel, but I don't know which analytics to look at to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm gonna cover that for you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is that you need to make sure that you're focusing on. I'm gonna tell you why. The very first thing that you need to make sure that you're focusing on is your thumbnail click-through rate. And the reason that this is so important is because your thumbnail is the first point of contact that you have with your current viewers and with new viewers. So your thumbnail and your title are extremely important. So paying attention to your click-through rate in your thumbnails is going to let you know how effective your thumbnails are, how effective are your thumbnails at bringing people in to your video content. And I know you're wanting to know, hey Nick, what's a good number to go for? YouTube says that between three and 10% is the average. So you wanna try to go for the higher version of that or higher. So if you're getting like a 1% or a 2% or like a 1.6 or whatever, then you wanna look at your thumbnails, just be honest with yourself, look at your thumbnails, say, yeah, I might've spent a lot of time on this, but people just for whatever reason, they're not responding to it. So I need to make some experiments here and I need to figure out what I can do with my thumbnails in order to get people to respond to my thumbnails. A really cool tool to use for this to make sure that you're making effective thumbnails is called TubeBuddy. I'll put a link to it down in the description below, but they have an A-B testing feature where you can actually test thumbnails against each other other to see which one's the most effective. Make sure you check it out in the description below. The next thing that you should be paying attention to in your analytics is your audience retention reports. Your audience retention reports are going to let you know how people are responding to your content because you might think that you're putting out the best videos in the world. Your family, your friends, everybody might think, hey, this is great, but then you go into your audience retention reports and you can actually see how people in mass are responding to your content. So your audience retention reports are gonna let you know, hey, how good is my content? Is my content decent? Is my content great? Does my content suck? Look at your audience retention reports objectively and take the data. It doesn't matter what you think, it matters what that data tells you in terms of how people are actually responding to the content that you're putting out. Now, with the audience retention reports, you wanna keep an eye on the total percentage viewed and you wanna keep an eye on the actual total watch time that you're generating because let's say for example that you're putting out videos and you're getting a minute worth of watch time because they are two minute videos. Well, if you're putting out a video that's 10 minutes long and you're getting five minutes, then those videos are accumulating more watch time for your channel, which ultimately is a bigger win. The next one that you wanna focus on inside of your analytics is your overall subscriber growth. Now, I know that it's important to not get caught up in the numbers per se, but if you're not generating any subscribers, but you're generating a lot of views, that tells you that, yeah, people are coming in and they're watching your stuff, but they're not finding enough value there to subscribe and to want to keep coming back. Another thing that you wanna look at when you are looking at the amount of subscribers that you're generating is you wanna look at the specific videos that are generating the most subscribers for you. And if you wanna fine tune this, I actually built a calculator because a lot of people are asking me, hey Nick, how do you figure out your view to subscriber ratio and all that stuff? Um, I actually built a calculator if you go to views to subs, Dot com, then you can actually calculate this in if you don't wanna do the math. And I know that subscriber growth thing is kind of obvious, but I just wanted to mention it and explain why that particular metric is important because it lets you know the value that you're bringing to other people. Another metric that is important is how many playlist ads that you're getting. Now, this isn't something that's gonna trigger anything or anything like that, but the reason that this is important is because this lets you know how much personal value that you're bringing to people. So if you're putting out content and people are adding it to watch later lists or they're adding it to playlists for themselves, that lets you know, hey, people are finding enough value in this that not only are they subscribing, but they're actually wanting to watch these particular videos more and more. And another thing that that's gonna tell you is that's gonna say, when you start clicking into those, is that's gonna say, hey, if people are finding value in these particular videos and they're adding these to playlists a lot, maybe, just maybe, I should make more videos like that. Now, when you're looking at that information, what you wanna think about is you wanna think about, okay, this video, is it generating a lot more subscribers because it's gotten a lot more views? If so, 
maybe I need to make more videos like this to get more views and subscribers, or if you have a video that's generating subscribers at a higher rate, but it hasn't gotten all the views that some of the other videos have gotten, then in that case, you can look at that and say, okay, well, if this one's generating more subscribers at a higher rate, my view to subscribe ratio that I mentioned a minute ago, if this one's generating subscribers at a higher rate, then how could I remake this video or make videos like it that maybe I could go for more difficult search terms, or maybe I could try to do another way that I can present this so that I can try to get more views on this particular topic because it's generating more subscribers at a faster rate. Another one that's important to keep in mind when you're looking in your analytics is the shares. A lot of people overlook shares and they're like, oh, well, shares aren't important. But in reality, shares mean that your content is so good that the people that are watching your videos find enough value in it that they're willing to share it with other people on the internet, be it their family, their friends, their followers, whoever, that they're finding that much value in what it is that you're doing, that they are willing it to share it with their networks, with their people that they know. And of course, the more that your stuff is shared out there, that's the more session times that are gonna be started on YouTube, that's more people that are gonna be exposed to your content, that's gonna start bringing more people in and all that stuff. So shares are definitely an important thing to keep an eye on when it comes to your YouTube metrics. And of course, the overall engagement that you're getting on your channel also matters. Now, some people are like, hey, comments don't matter, likes don't matter and all that stuff. And it's not something that is going to make YouTube say, oh, well, this video got a lot of comments, so let's just show it to everybody. It doesn't work that way, but what it does do is it tells you that what you're making is interesting enough or that people are opinionated enough or whatever to where they are gonna take that effort to go and they're gonna sit there and they're gonna type in their computer and they're going to make that effort to interact with what it is that you're doing. And if you look at it, if you back up everything that I've said so far in this video, you know, we've got the thumbnails, which tells you how people respond to what it is that you're doing. We've got your watch time, which tells you how people respond to what it is that we're doing. We've got your playlist, which tells you how people respond to what it is that you're doing. Shares, how are they responding? The overall engagement on your channel, how are people responding to what it is that you're doing? The reason that these particular ones are important is because YouTube is responsive system. And the more people are responding to your content in all these different ways, the more YouTube is gonna promote you out on their platform because you're keeping people on the site. You're keeping people interested in your content. You're keeping people engaged with what it is that you're doing. They're responding to your content. I made a video about how to generate more watch time on your channel as well, because that's one of the things that YouTube is judging us on. I'll put a link to that at the top of the screen right now so you can check that out. It talks about adding the right stuff to your descriptions and where to use cards and where to use playlists and not use playlists and that kind of stuff. Really cool, so make sure you check it out. And if you wanna learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.